There's lots of information to soar through when it comes to COVID-19. In this video, we aim to clarify the medications and treatments currently available to patients who test positive for COVID-19. Please note that this is strictly informational and any medical decisions should first be discussed with your primary care doctor. The main treatment we use at UCLA Health is Paxlovid, which is an antiviral pill. Paxlovid must be used within five days from when you first experience symptoms. Your doctor must prescribe this medication and you will take it for five days. Paxlovid is very effective in preventing people from developing serious disease from COVID-19, and it prevents people from being hospitalized. It is not meant to shorten the duration of your symptoms, prevent long COVID, or reduce your ability to transmit COVID-19 to someone else. Patients under the age of 65 with no significant medical issues who are fully vaccinated will likely not benefit from Paxlovid. Some patients are unable to take Paxlovid due to medical conditions, such as kidney disease, or because of potential harmful interactions with other medications, which we will discuss later in the video. In these cases, there are two intravenous therapies available, meaning they must be administered into a patient's veins with a needle. The first treatment is remdesivir, which requires treatment once a day for three days, either at an infusion center or at home. Remdesivir must be taken within seven days of the onset of COVID-19 symptoms. Studies have shown that remdesivir prevents hospitalizations at a similar rate as Paxlovid. The second option is a monoclonal antibody called beptilovimab, which can be administered in a single day. Despite its shorter treatment time, there are limited data on the effectiveness of beptilovimab, so it is not considered a first-line treatment. After taking beptilovimab, a patient must be observed for at least one hour by a healthcare professional in case of any adverse reactions. Beptilovimab must be taken within seven days of the onset of COVID-19 symptoms. Please reach out to your primary care doctor to determine which treatment option is most appropriate for you. In general, we recommend that individuals that meet the following risk groups consider these therapies patients who have not been vaccinated against COVID-19 or have not received the full series of COVID-19 vaccination recommended for their age group and medical conditions, patients who are at high risk due to a compromised immune system, such as individuals on chemotherapy, taking medications to prevent organ transplant failure, or those with underlying immunodeficiencies. Other high-risk groups, such as patients with diabetes, obesity, heart or lung disease, there are a few things to look out for when taking these COVID-19 therapies. Common side effects of Paxlovid include a strange taste in your mouth, nausea, diarrhea, and drug interactions. Patients taking Paxlovid may have to pause or adjust the dosing of such medications such as statins for cholesterol, Coumadin, and other blood thinners. The following medications cannot be taken at the same time as Paxlovid. Tacrolimus, fentanyl, or amiodarone. Please check with your prescribing doctor and pharmacists to review your current medications for any potential drug interactions. You should also look out for what is known as rebound symptoms, which means a return of COVID-19 symptoms after you've started feeling better. If you develop a new fever, sore throat, congestion, or cough after recovering from COVID-19, please let your doctor know. And please remain in isolation until your symptoms improve or you no longer test positive with a COVID-19 home antigen test. Just because you have rebound symptoms does not mean you are going to get sicker. Paxlovid is effective in preventing hospitalizations even if someone has rebound symptoms. Please keep in mind that if your community is experiencing a surge, it's possible that you may not be prioritized for treatment, especially if you are at low risk for hospitalization. While these treatments can be helpful to some patients, vaccination is still the most effective way to prevent serious infection and hospitalization from COVID-19. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, please contact your primary care doctor or visit our website for more information.